everybody! I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I am so happy to have you here today and before we get started, be sure to check out my website CorinneBlackstone.com. You'll find blogs, tutorials, free SVGs, paid SVGs, all the fun stuff over there, plus some great resources to help you not only save with your crafting, but also learn more about crafting as well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to work with a doodle font. So these fonts are really, really fun, but they are definitely a different ball game when it comes to how to create with them. And I've had so many of you ask me how to work with these that I'm excited to show you how to do it. I will link everything that we're using in this video down below in the description, including the font that I'm using, plus some other super cute doodle fonts that I found that I thought you guys would really, really love. So let's go ahead and get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. We're going to be working with this Valentine alphabet letters for sublimation and printing. You guys wanted to see a tutorial on how to use these. So we'll use this little Valentine Day one because I think this one's pretty cute. And honestly, you could use this for any time of year. So the first thing that you need to do is to actually download your design from the website that you bought it from. I'll link this exact design down below, but what you're going to do is click on your design and it's going to ask you where you'd like to save it. Now, technically, this is not a font. This is just images. So for something like this, I would probably make a new folder since I don't have one. And what I would do is I'm just going to make a new folder and I'm just going to call it um, Doodle Alphabet. And then I want to open that folder because that's where I'm going to save this to. So just go ahead and click Save. Then you want to open the folder that you just downloaded, which it can take a second to download because it's a pretty big file because it's got a lot of information. And what you want to do is click Extract All. Then you're going to go ahead and click Extract. Now again, this may take a moment just because this is a really large file. It has 359 items, so it's really, really big. So again, it may take a minute to get all situated and extracted. Once the file has fully extracted, you can close your extracted folder and I recommend leaving this folder open that has all of your extracted files in it. Now let's head over to Design Space. If I was doing a sublimation design, I 100% would not be using Design Space, but I'm just gonna make a quick print and cut sticker so that you guys can see how to do this. But I would use like a different program like Canva or Inkscape if I was gonna use this for sublimation. But for these purposes, let's just make a quick sticker. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to upload and I'm going to choose upload image. Now, instead of browsing for my image, I'm going to open up the folder that I had all of my stuff in. Once you have that folder open, you can go ahead and click through it and find what you want. So you can see these are all the little embellishments that are included that you can add to your font. So we'll get back to those in just a minute. Now what you'll see is you have the different patterns. So this is the gray swirls. Then we have the heart pattern. We also have the love words. So this has like little loves inside of them. This one is a pink checks, which are pretty cute. We have a pink chevron. We also have pink polka dots. And then finally we have the ready-made designs. So these are ones that you can just quickly throw in to your design space or print out and use pre-made. But we're going to go ahead and spell out my name. So in order to do this, I have to upload each and every letter individually. So let's go ahead and let's kind of keep it into the pinky kind of words. So let's go with the heart pattern for the C. So all I have to do is drag it and drop it. And then I want to choose complex. Click continue. And I don't need to do anything here. I just need to click apply and continue. Then I want to make sure to save it as a print and cut image and click upload. Now I'm gonna have to do this for every individual letter that I wanna use. So I'm gonna have to upload the image and then open up the folder and drag and drop that letter in. So for my O, let's do the love words. So we're gonna go O, again, complex. Don't have to do anything here, apply and continue. Save it as a cut image and then click upload. So I'm gonna upload all of my letters and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to upload the little doodles. Now that I have all of my letters in here, all I have to simply do from here is I can choose those doodles that I want to use. So I'm going to click upload image. And again, I'm going to go to that folder. And remember I showed you where all those little doodles were. So those are right here under doodle embellishments. So you can kind of pick and choose what kind of little extra doodles you want to put into your words. I'm a sucker for a balloon. 
So again, you're gonna do it just like you did the letters, choosing complex, just clicking apply and continue and saving it as a print then cut image. You can add as many little doodle extras as you want to. It's up to you, however you wanna make this. Make it your own, have fun with it, do whatever you wanna do. select all of my letters and the doodles that I chose and I want to up, add to canvas now this is probably going to take a minute because this is a lot of information for design space to handle these letters are very large so we're just going to give it a minute and come back to it now that all of our letters have loaded into design space you'll see obviously that they're very large and you can definitely tell they're too large because they have this little red circle with the exclamation point in it that just means they're too big for print and cut so I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure to change this lock to be closed. And then I'm just gonna change the width on all of them to five and that's gonna make them way smaller. Just a lot easier to work with that way. Now from here, I can spread all my letters out. And I may still need to size it down a little bit more just because they are still pretty large. So I'm gonna size it down just quite a bit more so I can kind of move these around a little more. And you can see all of the different elements that we're going to be using. So I need the R. Oops, I know how to spell my own name, I swear I do. So all I'm kind of doing is I'm making them so that the letters overlap a little bit. And I'm gonna change like which ones are on top and which ones are on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just choose one random letter and choose to send this one to the front. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'll bring this one to the front and I will, that one's already to the front. So I think that looks pretty good. So that's really all you have to do as far as your letters are concerned. You just sort of move them around however you want. Now you can always select everything and if you want, you can align them. It's up to you and the way you want them to look. I think I'll align them, but you don't have to. It's kind of the fun with these letters. They're a little more organic. Now from here, we can kind of add our little elements. You can resize them to make them however big you want them to be. And I'm gonna put him and move him to the front. So all I'm doing is right clicking on it and just choosing bring to front. And then I'm just gonna like size him down a little bit. And I'm gonna give him his little swirlies. So again, I need to bring these to the front so that they're in front of our text. So we'll just bring those up and I'll make, make those a little bit bigger. And then we've got this little balloon, which again, like you can kind of play with and just do whatever you want with it. And if you want multiples, you can use control C and control V to put more balloons out and you can just add them wherever you want to in your design. So if you want to like put one here, it's really up to you. I'm just sort of playing with it just to show you some of the options on what you can do with this font. You can add as many doodles as you want to it. It's really up to you. So once you have it the way you want it, what you're gonna do is select everything in your design and you need to resize it so that it fits within the print then cut area. So for a print then cut design, it goes 6.75 by 9.25. So I'm gonna make mine 9.25 wide and it will fit within our print then cut area at that point. So now that I have this sized so that it fits, I need to select everything one more time. And what I'm gonna do is use the flatten option. By using flatten, it creates this to be one single piece and that way it knows not to cut each individual letter. Now what we need to do, because there are transparent parts in this, is to actually create an offset to go around this. The wings on our B are transparent and then we have this little swirl here that's gonna cut out. And it's gonna cut out between all of our letters and that's just kind of a pain and I really don't want it to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to where it says offset and click on that. And we're gonna give it just a second to load because sometimes it can be a little bit slow, especially when using like a font like this where it has a lot of information. You can adjust the size of your offset to pretty much any size that you want it to be. It's really up to you if you want a larger offset or a smaller offset, but I'm gonna stick with this size here, which is just 
0.097 and I'm going to click apply. Now this offset result here, I've got a bunch of holes that I don't want in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here where it says operation and I'm going to change it from print and cut to basic cut. By doing that, it's going to allow me to use this contour option and that's going to allow me to fill in all these holes. Now you can do it a couple ways. You can either click each of the holes if you want to or a super fast way is just to choose hide all contours and then close the contour option. Now you'll see that our outline here, this, this gray background is all solid where we want it to be. Now, if you don't want it to print gray, that is totally fine. You can either change it to any color that you want it to be. It's up to you if you wanted to do a different color or you could just make it white and then it won't print any color there. You could make it black if you want it to be. It's up to you and however you want your design to look. Now you wanna change it back to print then cut and then from there change the color. But what's really fun is you can actually add patterns to the back too. I mean, it's gonna be a lot of pattern, but it could be fun. Just depends on how you want it to look. I'm just gonna show you a couple patterns just for fun, just so you can see sort of what it might look like if you chose a pattern instead of just a solid color. There's so many ways that you can make this and make it your own. Do it however you want to do it. It's really up to you. But these doodle fonts are just a really fun and easy way that you can make just a really cool looking design. And again, these are great for print and cut or for sublimation. They're definitely a lot easier because you can make them larger for sublimation, but I still think they're pretty fun. So I'm of course just going to do a solid color. I think I'm just going to stick with like maybe purple. I don't know. I don't mind that one. I definitely don't think green. Um, but I'm just going to play around with it and see if I find a color. I think that's actually really pretty, that light blue. I kind of like this lavender too. So let's go with the lavender. I just think it's fun. So now once you've got that decided and you figured out what you want your offset to look like, you need to select your entire design again and you need to flatten it. Because if you don't, it's going to try to cut around the offset and the sticker as separate pieces. Now, here's the thing. Because we added the offset, we're a little bit too big for our print and cut size. So we need to size it back down to 9.25. Once you've sized it back down, you'll notice that that little red part goes away. So when we hit make it now, what you'll see is it's going to bring up our design onto our paper. Now what's cool about this is we could make a couple of copies of it. I think we can fit two. I don't think three will fit. I think only two will fit on our page, but you can make two of the same item very, very easily. Now from here to print it, it's really easy. It's gonna depend on what kind of paper you're using, what kind of, if you wanted to put this on like printable HTV or sticker paper or cardstock or whatever you wanted to do, however you wanna print this. I'm gonna click continue. And from here, I'm just gonna click send to printer. Now from here, we're gonna do a couple of settings to make sure that we get a really good high quality print. So you wanna make sure you have your correct printer selected. I use an ST4000, and then you wanna turn on your system dialog. I recommend also leaving on bleed. I leave it on for everything. It's gonna push the color a little bit further out from the edges of your design so that when it cuts around it, if it cuts just a little bit off, it won't show a white border. This is most important if the color goes all the way to the edge of your design like mine does. But if you have a white designed background, it's not gonna make a big difference, but you can leave it on. Then just simply click print and it's not gonna send it to your printer right this second because it's going to bring up our printer dialog box. That dialog box is gonna allow us to choose some settings that are gonna make our print come out way better than they would otherwise. So over here, you'll again wanna make sure you have the correct printer selected. Again, I use my Epson ET 2720. I'm gonna choose preferences. And from here, we have a few things that we can change. You can change your paper type if your printer likes you to. Mine, for whatever reason, it works best on plain paper. So I just always leave it on that. I'm gonna change the print quality to high. Then I wanna to go to one more thing and I'm gonna to go to more options and I'm gonna turn off my high speed print. Just an easy way to do that. You don't get the lines that way. It just makes it a lot cleaner of a print. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And when I click print, it will send it to my printer. And I don't have anything loaded in there right this second. So I do need to load something in there to print with. And I think I might use some sticker paper just cause I think it might be fun. I've got some really cute ones from Hayes that might make really cute Corinne stickers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that printed out and then we'll take this over to the machine and I'll show you how it cuts it out. 
it's time to cut out the doodle font. So you want to make sure that it's facing the same way that it's facing on Design Space on your mat for cutting. If it's not, it will cut it out funny. So I'm going to go ahead and just place this down. Now I'm using some holographic sticker paper from Hayes just because it's what I had on hand. But you can really do this on cardstock, sticker paper, printable vinyl printable HTV, whatever you want. I'm gonna load it in and what it's gonna do is it's going to scan the lines and then it will cut around our image. Now I cut this on the heavy cardstock setting with the hope that it would cut through. Now I've cut Hayes um, holographic sticker paper many times and sometimes it cuts through and sometimes it doesn't. So what I recommend is if you want it to cut all the way through, check your cut before you unload. You'll notice I did not hit the unload button, but I'm gonna peel the back up. Now it didn't cut through right here. So what I'm gonna do, cause I'm guessing it probably didn't cut through amazing through some other parts is I'm gonna make sure that this is stuck back down. And rather than unloading my machine, I'm gonna allow it to cut again. So all I'm gonna do is hit the C button. The reason you don't unload is because regardless of how well you think you put this back in the machine, it's never going to be exactly the same. So it may cut off the lines just a little bit, meaning you're not actually getting a double cut on the same line that you want to. So what you're going to do is don't unload, just hit the Cricut button and it will cut it again. So now that it's cut around it one more time, I'm going to just double check that cut much better. Look at that. It's like perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and unload and I can just peel the backing all the way off. Then I want to make sure to flip my mat over and I'm going to remove my design from my mat by rolling my mat backwards and then just pushing down on my design. Now I'll get you guys an up close view of these so you can kind of see what they look like. I think this came out so cute and it was really easy. You saw how simple it was to work with a doodle font. Now the big thing with the doodle font is again that you have to upload every letter individually, but it's still a really fun way to make a fun little design. Now like I said, you don't have to make stickers with these. You can use these as additional parts of cards. You can use them with printable HTV, card stock, printable sticker paper. There are so many options for using a doodle font and ways to use it that don't feel like just because I made stickers means you have to. Now obviously these are huge stickers and chances of me putting them on anything are slim. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you kind of what this sticker looks like when it's removed from the backing because these are translucent stickers, meaning that the backing on them is not white. So I'm gonna hold it out a little bit so you can see. Do you see how it kind of picks up the color of the table a little bit versus like if I put it back over this name, the backing, do you see the difference in the color? how it kind of changes. Well, that is because this is a translucent sticker. So I'm gonna show you the back of it as well because you can see the name through it. So when you work with sticker paper like this, you do want to be aware of that and make sure that whatever you're putting it on is like a white surface. Now, I'm fine that I didn't get that lined up okay again, but I think these came out so cute. The doodle font is a really fun way that you can really use your Cricut or really any design software and adding the little extra little doodles on it, like the little balloons and the bumblebee, super duper fun. If you have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. I will link everything that I used in this video in the video's description, which you can find right below. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and as always, happy crafting.